I know you guys didn't ask for it, but I just really want to make this video for you guys. And for those of you that want a one-stop shop, a complete, full, complete guide on fat loss and everything that has to do with fat loss, this video is gonna be much different from my other videos. There's gonna be less edits. There's gonna be less fancy B-roll going on and it's just gonna be quality content. And this is gonna be a video that is gonna have plenty of chapters for you guys to go through. If you wanna find something specific that I'm talking about for fat loss, the goal of this video is just to talk to you guys about everything that you could ever possibly want to know about fat loss. And I've been a lot doing a lot of research and over the years in my personal experience, I have some notes off screen here for you guys. So a bit of a podcasty type video. So if you guys want to skip around in this video, feel free to do so. But this video is for you. The only video that you'll ever need for fat loss. I'm going to be talking about the introduction of fat loss, some goals and principles about it too, the benefits and downsides of fat loss. There are some downsides, some expectations, what you guys should expect on your fat loss journey, the general premise of fat loss. So what the general idea is behind it, calories, of course, cardio, activity, eating, protein, carbohydrates, fats, meal and nutrient timing, supplementation, the gym and habits. So a lot of content. I really want this to be, you know, one thing that you guys can always refer to if you're ever losing weight and ever have a question or get stuck on your journey. So without further ado, if you guys are ready to get into this, I'm really excited about this video. Let's get into it. So the introduction and goals and principles of fat loss. So getting right into it, the goal of fat loss is to reduce your adipose tissue. Fat loss happens by your fat cells shrinking in size. That's how fat loss happens. Fat does not turn into muscle, despite popular belief in myths. That does not happen, that does not work. And there's different reasons that you may want to lose fat. So there's performance reasons. Maybe you want to improve your health, your blood work, or perhaps, perhaps you just wanna look better. Or perhaps maybe it's impeding on your lifestyle being over fat or overweight and perhaps you're getting winded walking up a staircase or you can't get out of bed or you're having a hard time fitting into a car you know whatever the reason is there's plenty of reasons why you might you know require fat loss so the whole idea of fat loss is that you have to be in a hypocaloric state or in a state that you're eating less than your body is using move more and increase your protein to prevent muscle atrophy or muscle breakdown. And so to increase fat loss, you cannot just eat the same and work out more. You can do that for a short period of time, but eventually you're gonna have to either cut your food down as well, increase your activity, otherwise you're just gonna hit a wall and plateau with your fat loss. Now, also recomping or recomposition, as you guys may know it, or main gaining is a process where people might think they can lose fat and gain muscle at the same time, this does work for beginners, for people that are new to the gym, that they're showing this new stimulus to their muscles for the first time. And so they can just do anything and gain muscle and probably lose fat too. However, if you guys have been training for over a year, I'd say you're maybe intermediate or especially advanced, you're going to have to go a proper fat loss route, meaning you're going to have to eat less and you're not going to be able to gain really much muscle because you're trying to retain your muscle tissue during fat loss. So Recomping or recomposition works, but it's uh, definitely not as efficient as being in a calorie deficit for most people. Because think about it like this, your body values fat, your body wants fat, right? It's a good thing for your body to hold on to because it's long term energy, your body is more likely to eat your own muscle for energy than use its fat. So that's why if you guys ever hear of fat loss diets, they always have high protein. This is done so you can hold on to your muscle to prevent it from atrophying or breaking down or being burned. If you guys want fat loss, you guys have to increase your protein so that your body uses its fat instead of protein in the form of muscle. So with that being said, let's get into some benefits of fat loss, right? There's plenty of benefits. You can be more, you'd be faster, 
you're more agile, endurance, flexible, mobile, be more explosive, less injury prone, right? The less you weigh, the less weight you're carrying around. And therefore, there's less chance of that weight shifting of your bones and ligaments and tissue causing injuries to joints, let's say. Uh, you'll be healthier for sure. And you'll feel better. And you'll also enhance your aesthetics. You will look better, right? You can have a six pack, but you won't really see it unless you lose weight. You can have nice veins, veins and biceps, you know, look really good, but you won't know until you lose that fat. But there are some downsides to fat loss, believe it or not. And it's not all good things, right? As you know, people that have fat loss and they have this for a prolonged period of time and they go through this, they become fatigued, they become weaker, they will start to lose muscle over time, their strength will take a hit, their endurance will actually start to decrease. They may develop eating disorders, right? Many eating disorders are because people have a not good relationship with food, let's say, and they um, they just keep taking fat loss to the next level to where it starts impacting their health. They Their blood work is bad. And even though they're a low body fat percentage, that will start causing reproductive issues as well because fat is an essential macronutrient. Your body needs fat to survive. And so if you take fat loss too far, there are definitely some downsides. So keep that in mind. Now, moving into some expectations of fat loss. What can you expect on a fat loss journey? Well, the fat loss journey starts with week one. And if you guys have ever tried losing weight, you'll notice that you may lose about five-ish pounds, three to six pounds your first week. That is mostly always water weight. So your first week, an expectation of fat loss is you're going to be losing water weight. Fat loss doesn't really occur until the week after and the week after that. And then you can see actual trackable and measurable progress in your fat loss. So once your water is lost the first week, then you can see fat loss. So that's an expectation right there. As far as how long you should be doing fat loss, the expectation is don't do it over four months. Two to three months is good. Anything under two weeks, it's hard to really measure fat loss. There's no real point in that. If you diet for more than four months without any diet breaks, you're going to have diet fatigue. You're going to probably balloon back up to the original weight. Your cravings are going to be insane. Your hunger is going to be through the roof. And you're just going to be very fatigued. And it's going to be really difficult to stick with your diet. So two to three months is a good marker to hit for your fat loss goals. Then once you hit that, feel free to take a diet break, maintain that weight for a couple weeks, and then go back into it when you're ready, mentally and physically. And how much should you lose, right? I want to lose five pounds of fat every single day. That's not going to happen, right? Uh, I'm going to lose half a pound every two weeks. Eh, that's probably too little. So actually, the recommended amount of fat that you guys want to lose is anywhere between half a percent of your body weight per week or 1% of your body weight per week. So if you're 200 pounds, you should aim from you know, one pound to two pounds a week. If you weigh less than that, you know, for me, about one to, I wouldn't push one and a half pounds personally for me per week. If you do two pounds a week at my body weight, I'm like 168 right now, I'm gonna like crash. That's gonna be very, very hard. The cravings are gonna be through the roof. The calorie slashing is gonna be crazy. And it's just gonna cause a lot of fatigue. So the reason why we choose 1% of your body weight, because it's found that anything more than that is just too fast. You're going to burn out. You're going to increase your risk of muscle loss because, as I just said, and as we know, your body will use your muscle tissue over your fat for energy. And it's going to be more the case when you're slashing all your calories. Uh, if it's anything under half a percent of your body weight per week, body weight, by the way, not body fat percent of your body weight. Uh, if it's under half a percent per week, that's just too slow. It's very hard to track and it's just not going to be uh, efficient. It's going to take forever to lose fat. So those are your expectations for your diets. Aim to lose half a percent to 1% of your body weight. Don't diet for any more than four months, ideally two to three. And um, you will need a diet break if you guys die for too long for your mental health and for your physical health and to just allow your body to catch up on its calories and maintain your weight for a little bit before you continue your fat loss. So 
Now we got those things out of the way. Let's talk about the general premise of fat loss. What's the basic idea? What happens? What's the fundamentals? If you could take everything in this video and condense it into a few sentences, this is basically what it is. In order for fat loss to occur, you have to be in a hypocaloric state. Not hyper, hypo, meaning below. So in a caloric deficit, meaning your calories have to be less than what your body burns. And that is easy enough if you either move around a lot or you exercise a lot. We'll get into that later, but there's many ways that you can get into a calorie deficit. So that's step one. You have to eat less than your body uses. Step two is to eat enough protein so you avoid your muscle atrophying or avoid your muscle breaking down because your body will use that for energy instead of fat. You also have to get enough carbs and fats in your diet to support your performance and your hormone levels. Spread your meals evenly throughout the day, basically, so you can have constant feedings and nutrient partitioning in your body. And basically increase your general activity or cardio or decrease your food. Eventually, if you get deeper into your fat loss, you're gonna have to do a mix of both, ideally. And that's basically it. That's the premise of fat loss. If you do those things, you will lose fat. If you're not losing fat, and it's been two weeks, you're saying, hey, I'm eating 2000 calories, I have not lost fat yet. Well, you have to probably reduce it again because that is not hypocaloric for your body. So I'll get into that later though. Actually, right now, the calorie section of this video, I'm gonna describe how you can personally lose fat in terms of calories. So like I said, to lose weight, your body needs to burn more than it's eating. And so calorie calculators are a good start. They can kind of tell you, you can look them up online, you enter in your body weight, your height, your sex, your activity levels, and it will give you a rough estimate of how many calories you need per day to maintain your weight, to gain weight, or to lose weight. And that's a good start. So go find, just type in body weight, uh, fat loss, calculator, calorie calculator online, and you can find those numbers there. And the thing is that, Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. They're averages, right? These are calculators. They don't take in consideration everything about you and your life and your body and your metabolism. So take that, and then all you gotta do is eat that amount of calories per week. And if you're not losing weight, decrease it. That's all it is. Decrease it anywhere from 250 calories up to 500. 250, if you're still not losing weight, another 250. So that's how that works. You don't want to slash it by too much because then you're going to run yourself into the ground. You don't want to do, you know, a 500 to 1,000 calorie deficit right off the bat because then you can't really move anywhere from there once you lose that. So like I said, if you find how many calories you eat to maintain your weight, if I'm staying at 160, how many calories do I need to eat to stay at 160? Just reduce that by 250 to 500 calories. And that's really easy. What is that, a couple cookies and a glass of milk? <laughs> and then you'll be losing weight essentially if that is how much you require to maintain your weight. And essentially you track that over time, right? Week to week, track your weight, be consistent about that, track your foods. And you know that's how, as far as calories go, that's what you gotta do. Just reduce it by 250 to 500 and you'll be good. And you will milk that out as long as you can. And then once you lose weight and you stop losing weight, don't just leave it there because now that's your maintenance calories. So you got to decrease that again, take it back, take it back. And eventually you'll get to a point where you need a diet break because you have nothing else to take out. So with that being said, calories out of the way, let's get into cardio activity and eating. So there's three ways to be in a calorie deficit, right? There's three ways for your body to use more than it's consuming. And that would be the number one, the most effective way to be in a calorie deficit, to lose weight, to lose fat. The number one way, the easiest way, reduce your food, eat less, reduce your calories. That's number one way. If I were to say, how do I lose fat? Eat less, simple. Not a thousand calories less, not, not your whole, don't starve yourself, but 500 calories to 250, it's good enough. That's the fastest route. However, the downside is that it will increase your hunger over time. You will start getting cravings if you don't eat the right foods. We'll get into that later. It will also worsen your mood over time. Eventually, if you're dieting for months, uh, you'll only be thinking about food. It'd be hard to focus. So there is a drawback to it. The second idea is... And if you want to be in a hypocaloric state, you have to increase your activity. 
And this is just general activity, right? So if you just move more, walk more, you know, if you just tap your foot, do manual labor, talk more, get up and walk to the mailbox instead of driving, whatever the case may be, this is called your NEAT, N-E-A-T. And this is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Big sciencey term, I know, but that just means general movement throughout the day that burns calories. If you increase your NEAT activity, then this will actually cause a lot of fat loss over time. Five calories there, five calories there, 10 calories, 20, 20. If you just do that over a day, over an entire week, you just increase your general movement, not walking, not cardio, this will actually create a large impact on your fat loss journey. And it's also low fatigue, right? You don't get really tired by walking to the mailbox or walking more or taking your kids out to the park. You don't get tired from that. You get tired from cardio and sprinting, but we'll get into that now, which is called formal cardio. Formal cardio is your third and least effective way of fat loss. First being eating less. Second would be increasing your general activity. Third would be formal cardio and weightlifting going to the gym. As contrary to popular belief, weightlifting, going to the gym, that does not burn a lot of calories, guys. It does not. Formal cardio is also a good option. You know, walking on an incline, that's what I personally do. Low intensity, steady state cardio is a good idea to lose fat, to increase your formal cardio in order to uh, increase your activity, increase your metabolism, burn more calories. That's good. However, it requires the most work. It's not as easy as just eating, you know, five cookies less a day. You physically have to move exert energy, sweat, go to the gym, uh, go outside, put on your shoes, walk. So if you guys want to do formal cardio, that's the third way to go in a hypocaloric state. All these options will reduce your body fat over time if you're consistent with it, providing that you're in a hypocaloric state. And eventually, I personally prefer to just reduce my food, but eventually if I'm losing fat for too long, I just, you know, I get tired of, and I get so hungry and my calories are so low that I have to start just moving more because I can't take out any more food. So I really have to start, you know, expending more energy throughout the day by walking and just, just being more, you know, active throughout the day, but it doesn't necessarily have to be cardio. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the macronutrients of your diet. So we're going to be talking about proteins fats, and carbohydrates. First on the list of macronutrients, we're going to talk about protein, right? There's three macronutrients and protein is the most important one for fat loss. Here's why. Protein is what your muscle is composed of. Your muscles right here, these things, these are made out of amino acids, right? That's what their building blocks are, which is a protein. Okay. And your body will use muscle for energy instead of your own fat. It will prioritize your muscle. It will eat away your muscle and burn it, and you will shrink in muscle size over losing fat if you do not take care of your muscles. And if you do not eat enough protein, your body will completely use its muscle. That's why you see a lot of skinny people. They're very bony, but they still have a little fat on them, but they're like, you know, scrawny if they have no muscle. That's exactly why. It's very easy to lose weight. You can, you can lose weight by just eating sticks of butter all day, providing that you're hypocaloric. But you're going to lose a lot of muscle because if you don't have enough protein in your diet, it doesn't matter if you're hypocaloric, you're going to lose muscle and not necessarily fat. And you don't want that, right? Most people, when they lose fat and they want to lose weight, they want to still retain their muscle and look good. So protein, number one macronutrient on your diet, you can get protein from many different sources, meats, fish, eggs, low dairy products, low fat dairy products, protein powders, um, if you're a vegan or you don't really eat animal products, you're going to have to probably eat a lot more protein than other people because of its bioavailability and its lower quality proteins and vegetables and plants products. And by eating enough protein, you will create resistance to muscle loss. So if you don't eat enough protein, you're going to pretty much lose a lot of muscle. So you, we don't want that. So how much protein should you eat? Well, you should aim to eat anywhere between 0.7 grams of protein all the way to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of your body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds, anywhere from 70 grams of protein to 150 grams of protein. That is a good start for people, and that's basically a wide range. The general premise is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. However, depending on your needs, depending on your size, your sex, your 
you know, metabolism, what you eat, where your quality of protein comes from, you may need more or less protein, 0.7 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of your own body weight. But if you guys just want to, you know, stick with one number, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is your goal for protein per day. So I weigh 170 pounds. So per day, as far as protein goes, I will require 170 grams of protein per day. And that can come from any complete protein source that I choose. However, I still have to be in a low and calorie deficit in order for fat loss to occur. And nobody wants to lose muscle. You don't want to lose muscle. So stick to those metrics for protein intake and you'll be good to go. Next, we're going to talk about carbohydrates. So as far as carbohydrates goes, they're not the devil. Carbohydrates are not evil. They're not bad. They don't cause fat gain. They don't make you fat. They don't do any of that actually. What does cause fat loss is by eating less and what causes fat gain is eating more than your body needs. So it doesn't matter where it comes from. So as far as carbohydrates go, carbohydrates, you can get them from fruits, vegetables, rice, potatoes, whole grains, etc. This is good sources for your carbohydrates during your fat loss diet, very high in fiber. So your body also prefers to use carbohydrates as an energy source over proteins and fats. So that's good news. More carbs means your body can now use the protein and put it towards muscle retention instead. So instead of your body using protein and your muscle for energy, it will use the carbohydrates instead. Okay, so that way your proteins can now work harder to essentially retain your muscle, which is what we want. A few benefits of carbs. Carbs are actually really good for you. Carbohydrates will cause insulin to be released into your bloodstream and insulin leads to faster recovery and more recovery from your training and working out so your muscles can stay repaired and recovered. They also, uh, glucose is a form of glucose is glycogen and glycogen stimulates muscle growth and recovery as well. If you also increase your carbohydrates in your diet, it lowers your cortisol, which also improves with fatigue and recovery. Also, if you increase your carbohydrates, you will also have more muscle pumps, which is also shown. If you have muscle pumps, there's more likely that there's inflammation that's occurring, which is more indicative of a muscle stimulus happening. So meaning if you get muscle pumps via more carbohydrates, you'll be getting better pumps, which actually stimulates the muscle for growth, actually more so as the scientific literature has been shown. So carbs are a good thing, as you guys can see. So what can we do about carbs? How many carbs a day should we be eating? There is a recommendation between one to two grams of carbohydrates per day per pound of your body weight. However, an easier way to calculate your carbs is to simply calculate your proteins, then calculate your fats. We're going to get into that next. And then fill the rest of your diet, assuming you're still in a calorie deficit with carbs. So let's say you have 160 grams of protein, 80 grams of fat, then the rest of your diet will just be carbs. So whatever that needs to be in order to be below your maintenance calorie threshold, that's going to be your carbohydrates amount. So carbohydrates are good for you guys. So now with proteins and carbohydrates out of the way, now we can get into the last macronutrient, fat. So fats are an essential macronutrient and they're needed to support your hormone levels and specifically testosterone right? If you have low levels of fat, both in your body and in your diet, to a certain point, you will start impacting your testosterone levels. That's why people that are super deep in a diet will actually lose their sex drive, believe it or not. And so fats are essential. You can't just get rid of them. And they can come from many different sources, fish, uh, beef tallow, butter, oils, nuts, dairy products, different things like that. You guys know where fats come from. And actually compared to carbohydrates and proteins, fats have nine calories per gram, whereas carbohydrates and proteins only have four calories per gram. So out of the three macronutrients, fats are almost twice as calorically dense as compared to proteins and carbohydrates. So they actually can contribute to your weight loss a decent amount if you slash, you know, just a few. You can run the math. 10 grams of fat reduced from your diet is 90 calories, whereas 10 grams of carbs reduced from your diet is only 40. So big difference. And so the way fat works in your diet as far as fat loss goes is once you meet the minimum requirements 
of bodily functions, you can just fill the rest with proteins and carbs. So you don't really have to have a high fat diet because you can have so many of those calories and put them into more filling macronutrient carbs, foods like vegetables and fruits and get way more volume in your stomach as compared to fats, right? What would you rather like a couple, like a teaspoon of oil or like an apple, right? It's basically the same calories. One's more filling though. And so how much fat should you be eating? Around half a gram per one pound of your body weight. So if that's pretty much enough to support your bodily functions during your fat loss, so figure I weigh, let's say 170 pounds, what would that be? Uh, 85 grams of fat for my diet would be a good enough amount. Fill the rest up with carbs, providing that my protein is also my one gram of body weight. And that is pretty much my diet breakdown for macronutrients for your fat loss journey. So assuming you're in a hypocaloric state, that is how you should be organizing your macronutrients. One gram of protein per pound of body weight, half a gram of fat per pound of body weight, and then fill the rest with carbs and still be in a hypocaloric state with about 250 to 500 calories below your maintenance amount, which you can find in a calculator or test it out with your own foods and tracking. Now that we got all the foods, calories, activities, general premise of fat loss out of the way, let's get into meal and nutrient timing. It's something that not a lot of people think about, right? How many meals a day should I eat? When should I eat it? How much macronutrients should be in each food? Should I have carbs earlier in the day or later? Am I going to gain fat if I have a meal right before bed? You know, how much you know, protein can I eat in a single meal? We're going to talk about that right now. So research shows that four to seven meals a day is ideal. Anything below four, you're just not getting enough of a spread of nutrients throughout the day, especially during fat loss. And so you don't want your body thinking that no food's coming. So let me just use muscle. So that's why you want to spread out your meals as much as possible throughout the day. So you have constant um, nutrient partitioning throughout the day. So your body constantly gets that fuel it needs from uh, external sources, your food. Um, And so anything over seven meals, there's no real benefit. Uh, So might as well just stick with four. I do four. I do three main meals and one high protein snack. I consider a meal. I consider meals things that you have a decent amount of macronutrients and you eat it, right? That's what a meal is. And so if you have a protein shake and a fruit and I don't know, like a rice cake or something, that's a meal. So four meals a day is what I personally do. I don't really get hungry on it, and it's a good amount, and it's not anything excessive. Like who has time to make seven meals? I don't know. But four to seven is a good amount to shoot for. As far as when your macronutrients should be eaten, naturally, you want to spread them evenly throughout the day. So have a good balance of fats, carbohydrates, and protein spread throughout the day. Uh, around your workout window, if you guys choose, it will show a slight improvement if you preferentiate your carbohydrates around your workout window. So pre-workout, have some carbs. Post-workout, also have more carbs. And if you want to squeeze your carbs around your workout time, that will also help some muscle recovery, muscle performance, and endurance in the gym. But you're not going to you know, not lose fat if you don't do that. So it's up to you if you guys want to check that out and try it. Uh, As far as before bed, no, you're not going to gain weight if you have a meal right before bed. Only reason that might happen is if that last meal, you're going over your calorie limit for the day, in which case, yeah, you'll gain weight. But it has nothing to do with the timing. It just has everything to do with how much you're eating. And people tend to eat more the more the day progresses. So as long as you got to be mindful of that, you have nothing to worry about. Um, Before bed, actually, before bed, you guys actually want to preferentiate high protein because you're going to go about eight to you know nine hours, however long you sleep without any food. And you really want that to be protein. So you guys have to have a high protein meal before bed. If you guys want to give yourself every single shot necessary in order to stop muscle loss from happening. Typically, people prefer to have a slower digesting protein before bed, such as casein. You can get casein protein as a specific powder. It's not whey protein. Whey is fast digesting protein. Casein is a slower digesting protein. So it digests slower amongst the night. So over the eight hours, you have a slow release of that protein. As far as whey, you'll just quickly digest it. And then you're not going to have anything for the, like, the last few hours. So preferentiate casein, although you'll be okay if you just have normal protein. That's fine. 
You also can get casein protein from dairy. So think low fat milk, low fat because of the calorie issue for fat loss, and also maybe Greek yogurt. I get the 0% Greek yogurt, Faye. By the way, that's the only Greek brand in the United States you guys should be worried about. If you guys want true Greek yogurt, Faye. It's spelled phage, but that's the number one uh, Greek yogurt that you guys should get. It's, that's high protein. That's an actual Greek yogurt from Greece. That's the brand that they use. Just a little tidbit there. I'm Greek. I know these things. <laughs> um, and so that's pretty much it, guys. As long as you guys spread out your meals throughout the day, four to seven meals, I prefer four, have high protein before bed, and preferentiate your carbs around your workout window to increase your pumps and you know just have a bit more energy, then you'll be good to go. Up next, let's talk about some supplementation. All right, you can't have a fat loss video without talking about supplements. So what are the supplements that work? As discussed earlier, supplements that work is casein protein or whey protein. Whey protein is a fast digesting protein. It's the most popular. It's probably one that you should probably buy. Um, you, you have that post-workout so you can get that immediate feeding into your body. Casein protein that comes from dairy products um, or you can just get it from Greek yogurt or an actual casein protein powder. That supplement also works for before bed. Next up is creatine. Creatine monohydrate in particular is a great supplement to have during your fat loss. If you guys want to have creatine, essentially it draws water into your muscles and it hydrates your muscles and increases your energy, your muscle endurance, your aesthetics, because it essentially makes your muscles look bigger. Your muscles look more full on creatine monohydrate because the water is being pulled inside of your muscles. A lot of people think that you're going to look bloated, you're going to look fat if you have creatine. That's not the case. That would be the case if the water was stored underneath your skin as fat is. However, it's stored underneath the muscles. So all it does is if this is your muscle, the muscle cell, and you put water in it, it increases like that. So it looks like it's pressing against the skin more, which makes you look bigger like this. I'm actually on creatine at the moment. And it takes you about a week to actually fully load it into your body. So you have to stay consistent with creatine. If you guys are planning on using it for fat loss, it doesn't necessarily make you lose fat. However, it carries a lot of water weight. So the scale might be a little iffy. You're gaining like six pounds of water. So if you want to use creatine for fat loss, I'd recommend take it about a week or maybe two weeks before your fat loss. That way your body has all the water retention, everything, you're not gaining any more weight. So that way, you know, when you start your fat loss, every pound is gonna come from fat. So yeah, uh, creatine, it's a naturally occurring supplement. It's cheap, it's good. Get creatine monohydrate, have five grams per day if you guys plan on having that. And that is a actual supplement that works. Up next is a multivitamin, just a general multivitamin that covers you know, a wide range of vitamins. And this is just to cover any micronutrient deficiencies that you may have in your diet. Naturally, you should be having multivitamins every single day just for general health, but especially for fat loss because you're not going to be eating too much on a fat loss, right? Especially deeper in the fat loss. And so you're going to be having definitely some micronutrient deficiencies the more you decrease your calories. So make sure you have that. Also throw in some vitamin D3 in there. And most people are deficient in vitamin D3. I have about 5,000 IUs a single day. I have a whole video on uh, muscle building supplements if you guys want to go check that out. Um, but And lastly, the last one uh, supplement that works is stimulants. Um, coffee and pre-workout. Those are stimulants I'm talking about, at least for this purpose in this video. <laughs> and that would uh, be caffeine. And the reason you might want to use caffeine for a muscle loss is because caffeine not only gives you energy when you're not eating enough food. So let's say you're not really in the best of moods. You're not in high hopes. You're really down. You're always thinking about food. You're hungry. And you can't really focus and have that energy. Caffeine will do that for you. As you guys know, Coffee is great. It wakes you up. However, use it as a tool. Caffeine is a hunger suppressant as well. So if you guys are feeling hungry on your fat loss diet and it's not time to eat yet, maybe you have like one more hour, like two more hours or three more hours, whatever the case may be, if you guys need to eat, instead of eating, have some water to fill yourself up or have some caffeine if it's pre-workout. If you guys are really hungry before your workout, but you can't eat yet, if you eat after, have caffeine. It improves your performance, improves your focus, it gives you energy, and it staves off hunger. 
Perfect. Now, the only downside of caffeine is if you have it too close to bedtime, it can keep you up. It can keep you awake, as you guys know. It's how caffeine works as a stimulant. And if you have caffeine too close to bedtime, well, you're going to start interrupting your sleep. And sleep is the most number one thing that you guys should do for your recovery. Uh, if you guys are sleep deprived on fat loss, you're going to be eating away so much muscle. You're not going to be recovering. You're going to feel like crap. And it's just not a good time. So prioritize sleep over trying to supplement it with caffeine. So and as you start eating less, you are going to have more trouble sleeping as well. So keep that in mind. Also, the last tidbit about caffeine is you don't want five scoops of your favorite pre-workout, right? If you guys want a little bit of caffeine, start maybe half a scoop first couple of weeks of your, you know, fat loss. And then as your fat loss progresses, maybe, you know, two thirds of a scoop, or maybe one scoop. Then as you're like, you know, you're like second or third month of fat loss and, you know, your workouts are constantly progressing upwards. Now you got to worry about, you know, like maybe like the, the full one and a half scoops, maybe, maybe some coffee. So don't just go in with caffeine right away from the get-go. I'm going to have like five cups of coffee and two cups because I'm not eating enough. I need that caffeine like chill, <laughs> you know, save that for the end, save that for the end of your diet. If you're like, you know, four months in, which is pushing it, um, then, you know, you might want to consider a bit more caffeine. But in the beginning, take it down a little bit. You don't need that much right away. And now for the moment that many of you guys have been waiting for, now we can talk about the gym, right? Go gym, right? Oh, I need to work out in order to lose fat. Not necessarily. You don't really need to go to the gym in order to lose fat. You can lose fat by just eating less, drinking a bunch of caffeine so you don't really feel hungry. And you can just have cookies all day if you wanted and just have less calories in your body burns. And you'll lose weight, you'll lose fat. But you'll also lose a lot of muscle too. So if you guys don't want to lose muscle and you guys want to retain that muscle, going to the gym is probably a very good idea. So like I said, it's not required to lose fat, but since a lot of you guys care about you know muscle retention as well, the gym is also a very important tool for fat loss and re muscle retention. So if you wish to retain your muscle and look fit while you're losing fat, and you don't want to just look scrawny and skinny and have your muscle waste away, then you should probably work out each muscle group two times a week. Two times a week is enough so that your body can, you know, be stimulated and you can feed it with protein and have it recover and have, give it a reason to still exist on your body. Because if you don't use it, you lose it, right? And your body will definitely use protein as a form of energy instead of fat whenever it needs to. So that's why you want to work out to kind of keep your body primed to keep that muscle on your body. And so the reason it's two times a week, because one time a week is just simply not enough. Muscle protein synthesis or the amount of time that your muscle is rebuilding, recovering is typically, you know, 24 to 48 hours. So if you do a bro split, which is like work out one muscle group a week, like you, what's going to happen on day five, day six, you're going to be losing that muscle, right? Because you're not giving it enough frequency in order to retain it. So that's why I work out each muscle group two times a week. If you guys are going to the gym, very good idea. And as your fat loss diet progresses, you also want to progressively overload. Now, what's that mean? That basically just means over time, increase either the weight, the sets, the reps, your proximity to failure, you know, how many reps in reserve you have, or your intensity, your time under tension, how long each set is, or reduce rest times, whatever the thing is, whichever one you choose, ideally weight or sets and reps, or proximity to failure, actually. The more you increase those in a more challenging direction, you should probably do that as you increase your fat loss, you know, length. If you're always working out the same way in your first week of fat loss as you did in your fourth, you know, month of fat loss, you're definitely have lost muscle, right? You need to constantly challenge yourself. And the more you progress in fat loss and the more you cut your calories, the more you need to give your muscles a reason to stay there. And the only way to do that is by challenging them, progressively overloading and eating enough protein and sleeping enough in order to recover. If you don't do those things, your muscle will waste away because your body needs it for energy. And there's something I want to talk about is a common misconception, a myth, and that is the myth of spot reduction of fat. So there's this idea out there that when you go to the gym and you want to lose fat around your abs or your stomach area, that all you got to do is train your abs, train your abs and you will lose fat on your abs. That's wrong. That's a myth. That is not true at all. If you lose fat, 
you will lose fat equally throughout your body, or perhaps whatever you're genetically predisposed to, you will lose fat preferentially in those areas. Some people may lose fat first in their shoulders or chest, and then in their legs, and then, you know, their face and their hands, and then last on their, you know, stomach or love handles. Some people, they hold a lot of fat on their face, but they'll have abs. It's, it's all different, guys. You cannot spot reduce your fat. It just depends on your genetics. And the one thing that you can count on, though, is that if you just work out, you eat enough protein, and you are in a hypocaloric state, and you're eating less than your body needs, then you will generally just lose fat across your whole body. But there is no specific way to spot reduce in a certain part of your body. Like, I want to lose fat, you know, on my biceps. It doesn't work like that. So get that out of your head if you guys thought about that. And also when it comes to the gym, don't specialize anything. Like I said, don't specialize your abs. Don't specialize, you know, your biceps, your triceps to get the cuts in that specific spot. It doesn't work like that. You actually want to work out your entire body as a whole because you're not trying to grow on a fat loss diet. That's what bulking is for. That's what a muscle gain diet is for. For a fat loss diet, your goal is to retain all the muscle that you can and lose body fat. And so there's no point in doing more sets of biceps or more sets of triceps or chest or back or legs, whatever you guys want, because you're not going to grow them, right? The whole point is to retain. So if you guys are putting all of your, you know, working sets into your upper body, your lower body will waste away. Your lower body will reduce in muscle size and strength. That's why you need to equally train all your body parts. Do not specialize and train your whole body as a whole and whatever frequency or split that you want two times a week. And that will be enough to, you know, retain as much muscle as possible, providing that your muscle building from your protein intake is good and your sleep and your recovery. Now, the last topic of this video, guys, to wrap this up, I'm going to talk about some habits, some fat loss habits. Habit number one is going to be a tough one, but I want you guys to develop the habit of avoiding junk food during your fat loss. You can lose weight on junk food, 100%. You can do it. You can lose weight on Oreos if you wanted to, but you're taking away calories from fats, especially proteins, and especially carbohydrates that are more filling. Because I can tell you right now, I will eat five Oreos, five cookies, and I will not be as full as if I had, let's say, two, you know, large potatoes or something the other day. You can eat a whole thing of cookies and you'll gain so many calories from that and you won't even notice. Or maybe if you're cooking and you put a lot of like olive oil on stuff and you really put dressings, a lot of people don't count their salad dressings, that can add so many calories that will essentially negate all the progress that you made on your fat loss. So just do yourself a favor, avoid junk foods because once you eat one, you're going to eat a second, you're going to eat a third. And while you can lose weight on junk food, you're just going to, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. So it's, it's going to be really hard. And temptation is also going to be there. Next would be to track your foods. You're right. You have to do that. You're going to have to track them. You're going to have to track your snacks, your drinks. You can't expect to track all your foods of the day, but not track your salad dressings, not track your oil, not track your drinks on the weekends, right? Not, not track your cheat meals. You know, if you don't track things, you don't know where you are. You don't know if you're eating in a hypocaloric state. You don't know if you're in a deficit of calories. You just simply don't know where you are in your fat loss. And again, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You don't know if you're making progress and there's just no point. And it's going to be really hard to also count and track your protein. There's many apps out there, plenty of good ones, or you can do it by hand if you wish. Next, next habit for fat loss is opt for lower calorie options, right? You can still drink milk on a fat loss diet. You can still drink soda, but just do zero calorie soda. Like you're not going to get fat from it. And there's caffeine in it too, which is hunger suppressant. When it comes to milk, you can still drink milk, right? But just do a zero fat option, skim milk. Yeah, it's not going to be as good, but it's like better than not having milk at all. Um, same thing with well, not peanut butters, not nut butters. Do not eat those. Those are high fats and fats are nine calories per gram. They're just going to mess up your fat loss. Don't, don't even do that. But like popcorn, there's plenty of low calorie popcorn. You get like two cups of popcorn for like 30 calories or something. It's crazy. So opt for lower calorie options uh, for foods. And that will really help a lot, especially with dairy, like big time. Like there's so many like high fats in dairy. So low fat dairy is really going to help you a lot with that. Next is to stay consistent with your weight tracking, your physical weight. So ideally you want to track your weight three times a week. 
Uh, more than that is good, but you know, you might see fluctuations like this. You might get scared, but three times, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's good. Track your weight. And if you're not making progress after a week, reduce your calories by 250 or 500 as discussed in the calorie section of this video. And just stay consistent with it. Because if you miss your weight check-ins, your weights, you know, you won't know where you are and you could be stagnating for weeks and say, oh, I was like 160 last week. Now I'm 162 this week. Yeah, you would have, you know, caught that ahead of time had you been tracking it the other two times, right? So stay consistent with your food tracking and your weight tracking for sure. That's the number one thing for progress, guys. If you don't track, you don't know where you are, you can't progress. So do that. And lastly, guys, the last habit, stay consistent. It's so easy to fall off track on weekends on Friday nights, let's say you want to have a slice of pizza, or you want to go out to a restaurant, avoid that too, you don't need that kind of temptation. And, uh, you know, it's so easy to just completely negate all the calorie deficit that you had all week. So like, let's say you, you were in a 500 calorie deficit each day, you can completely, let's say for four days, and your fifth day on Friday, you eat 2000 calories more than you're supposed to because you had pizza and fries and ranch dressing and donuts, you have 2000. Well, that's you just com you just completely wiped out four days of 500 calorie deficit. So all that struggle, you just wiped out in a single meal. So that's why you guys really got to stay consistent, stay strong. And if you guys are completely diet fatigued, take a break, stop your fat loss and just maintain your weight a little bit get some more mental clarity until you're ready to just go in for a full effort once again and stay consistent with your macro tracking that we discussed earlier with your gym with your energy with your sleep with your vitamin intake your nutrients and your supplements stay consistent that's the number one thing the difference between someone that loses 10 pounds and zero pounds is one person stuck with it and one person didn't consistency is the number one thing in the end if you guys can't stay consistent then you're not going to see your you know fat loss come to fruition and that pretty much wraps up the video guys i had a great time talking about this i want this to really be your one-stop shop for everything regards to fat loss and if you guys ever need anything with fat loss, come back to this video, go through the different video chapters. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. I answer pretty much all comments that are questions on my channel. Feel free to do so. I also plan on making another video just like this. If you guys like this longer format for muscle growth as well, for bulking, for mental health, for a complete guide on just being an adult, you know, different things for men self-improvement, not necessarily fitness. So if you guys like this longer form content, let me know down in the comments below. I really appreciate your feedback. It's very different from what I usually do, you know, the three to eight minute videos. This is like what? I don't even know, like 45 minutes, an hour maybe? Crazy long video. So it's more of a lecture, podcasty kind of style. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys found this video enjoyable and I appreciate the support. So if you guys want to check out other videos on my channel about men's self-improvement as well, I have a few videos right here for you guys. So without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, let me know down below what you think about this new video format and if you want to see more videos just like this or perhaps any video recommendations in the future. So last time I'm going to say <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in that next one.